Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, how to find a normal vector uh, numerically. And this is kind of in both the math section and the CFD section. Um, I think I'm going to put it under the CFD section just because I'm applying it to uh, something that I'm going to talk about later on in this, uh, in this section. So, um, so what's the motivation for finding a normal vector? Uh, so let's just let's look at a grid first. So this is a this is a typical kind of curvilinear grid um, where we have our uh, i direction running along these lines and our j direction running along these lines here. So now I'm going to take a look at just this uh, just this kind of cell here. So some random cell um, that that has a one of the boundaries. So it could have been this cell with this boundary, this cell with this boundary this cell with this boundary, um, but essentially the, the goal is pretty much to find uh, the, the outward normal vector of the cell boundary and the reason is that if you're using, uh, if you need to find the locations of ghost nodes, which are nodes outside of the actual physical curvilinear grid, uh, you need to know what the normal vectors, um, the normal vectors are of the surfaces. So, and I'll, I'll have a ghost node video uh, posted after this one. So if we're looking at just this cell here, I kind of I drew it over here in black. Uh, it doesn't look exactly the same because I skewed it. I'm just showing that it can be any kind of uh, any kind of quadrilateral. Uh, it doesn't have to be a parallelogram or a trapezoid. It can be any kind of quadrilateral. Um, <coughs> so it's drawn over here. I'm going to call this point here IJ and this point up here, since it's along the boundary, I'm going to call it I plus one J. So that's because along this line, along this boundary line, we're only changing the i uh, index. We're not changing the j index. So this could really be, you know, if the, if the starting j index is zero, this could really be i zero and then i plus one zero. Okay, so so the way to find a normal vector, we want to find the normal vector of the boundary face. So, so we're trying to find this blue uh, n vector, and the vector is denoted by a uh, right arrow on top of the, of the letter. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to find, okay, so we have the x and y points of these two nodes. Like, you know, if you know the grid, that means, uh, or if you have a grid, you know the x and y locations of each of these points. Okay, so if we know the x and y locations, we can calculate these, uh, what I call tangent, uh, or t, tangent, uh, tangent, um, well, this is the tangent vector here, and these are the tangent components. Okay, so this is the tangent, the x uh, tangent component, and the y tangent component. And then this long, this line along here is tangent to the actual physical face. Okay, so uh, we want to find the tx component and the ty component. So the tx component is the x value here minus the x value here. So that's what I've written up here, is that it's the x value at i plus 1j minus the x value at ij. So that's this, and then the y component is just the y value here minus the y value here, so that's y, the y value at i plus 1j minus the y value at ij, so that's these two. And then this is the, the magnitude of the tangent line, so this is the, the actual length of the face is given by the magnitude of the tangent line, which is uh, denoted by these two, or it's enclosed in the double uh, vertical braces, and it's the square root of the of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Okay, and that's easy to find. So like in, if you're programming this in a code, you can calculate tx and ty, and then you can just plug those in here to find the magnitude of the tangent line. So then, what we want to do though, is so now we have this, we have this red, well it's a black line, but with the red arrow, we have the tangent line here, and we want to find the normal vector. So what we do is we can split up the normal vector into components as well. So I just took this, I just took this vector, brought it down here, and I split it up into the x component and the y component of the normal vector. And so what we do, so this is a, this green part is like a general how to find a normal component of a vector. So pretty much if I have a vector, that's, I'll just call it v1, and it's a i plus b j, so that's a units in the i direction plus b units in the j direction. There's two ways to find, well there's two different uh, normal vectors you can find. Uh, so one of them, so what you do is you want to flip the, you want to flip the, the B and the J, the B and the A, uh, so that the B is associated with the I and the A is associated with the J now, and then you make one of those negative. So you can have, you can see how you can have two normal vectors. You can have, 
if I just have a random line like this, I can have a normal vector to the line this way and a normal vector to the line this way. And it depends on how you pick the sign or which which one of these uh, components you, you choose to make negative. So like the N1, you can have, you split them so you have BI and then you make this one negative, so minus AJ. Or you can make the first one negative, so negative BI plus AJ. So you have two normal vectors. And that comes into play because we want our normal vectors on all these faces to be pointing outwards. So the way to find the normal in the, so we, we want to find the components now of the, uh, of the normal vector. So the normal in the x direction, so the x component of the normal vector, uh, we're just going to flip, instead of taking, so we're going to flip the, we're gonna flip the, uh, the components essentially. So we're going to use t, for the x direction, we're going to use the y tangent. So we're going to use ty, and then to make it normalize, we're going to divide by the, the magnitude of t. So that makes, so that makes the, uh, the normal components normalized. And then n y uh, for the y component we want to again we we flipped the uh, like we did here we flipped the value so we're for the y component we're using the x component of the tangent and then I decide to make this one negative so the reason that I made that one negative is because um, like I said we want to use the we want to find the outward normals so if I'm looking at this space the outward normal is is kind of going down down to the right like that and that's how I drew it over here. So you can see in this, if, if we break out this normal vector into components, the x component is positive, and the y component is negative, assuming I'm saying that this is x and this is y, those directions. So, so to make it so that the so that it's going to be outward for this for at least this boundary, for this j equals zero boundary, I chose the x direction normal to be positive, so that's positive, and the y direction, or the y component normal to be negative, and that's why I have these, these two laid out like they are. So now, um, so now you have the x component and the y components of the normals, and you can use those to find your ghost nodes, um, which I'll explain in a different video. So like I said, the sign is based on the direction you want for the normal, so if we're talking about this one here, if we're talking about this edge, I would, I would have a normal going like this. And uh, so if I had a normal going like that, I'll draw it down here, then we want the y component to be positive, and we want the x component to be negative. So, uh, so that's how you find normal vectors, uh, and I did this from more of a computational standpoint where you can, you can loop through the, I, the i's in this case, so you can go from i equals zero to, uh, you'd end up going to i max minus one. So you're starting at this point, and you're using the forward point minus this point, right? So if you get up to this point here, you want to find the normal for this face. You want this face normal. You have to use this point here and this point here. So that means that you're going to be finding, so for how many, how many node points do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six points, but we're only going to be able to find one, two, three, four, five normal vectors. So you're going to loop from i equals zero to i is less than i max minus one, depending on how you, which code you're writing it in. That was for like C++, uh, like MATLAB starts with one, so um, just based on which code you're writing it in. Okay, so that's the normal vector, and I'll go over ghost nodes in a, another video. Thank you.